Okay, I think that uh, the bigger part of the participants are are, uh, are already in the in the meeting, so I think we can start. So welcome everybody to the first uh, standardization workshop uh, of Enerman. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you to all the external partner that uh, that are here with us to to share their experience on this uh, on this topic and uh, i want also to to thank uh, interact and sphinx for their effort in the organization of the meeting uh, the, the 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 goal of the meeting uh, as you can see from the agenda is to have an introduction uh, on the, the NRMAR project and an overview of the, um, the standardization activities that are carried out. Uh, have a feedback uh, from the, the external partner from the Denim project and the standardization in the research project. And uh, finally, have a brief overview of the pilot use case and their, uh, their standard actually actually available and they that they are using uh, on, this, uh, on this topic. Uh, and finally, we should have a discussion uh, on the standardization activity. Um, so uh, I would leave the floor to Panagiotis Katrakazas, that uh, is the, the scientific and technical coordinator uh, of the project. And uh, is going to introduce uh, an urban project. So uh, thank you very much for, for this introduction. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, let me just share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Perfect. OK, great. Um, so I, I'm just going to present you a brief introduction of the Enron project. I'm the scientific and technical manager uh, of uh, the project, and I will present ma the majority group uh, in this uh, effort. Um, so without further ado, um, this is the Enron Consortium. As you can see, we have a lot of partners that are from a different uh, spectrum, from the technological and the pilot on our site. Uh, we are a large, a huge consortium with a lot of expertise and technical background, so we are confident that we are going to achieve the Enerman vision and how we're going to implement this in the three-year time of uh, this project. Um, in a nutshell, uh, what the Enerman project is trying to do is to explore the energy sustainability concept in a three uh, aspect combination, which is uh, the, me the measuring of energy consumption, uh, the measurements of energy cost due to the power grid electricity prices and the environmental impact this has due to the production process of this consumed energy. Um, what we're trying to do in the project is introduce an energy sustainability management system, uh, trying to achieve a holistic and data-based view of the energy efficiency use and consumption within the factory plants that we are investigating. And this is going to be evaluated and demonstrated via eight, eight different pilots in different use cases that are going to be focusing on different uh, manufacturing sectors, including the food, metal processing and the automotive manufacturing cases. Um, the description of these pilots uh, can be shown in this table where you can see that we have three different sectors. The first one is the appliance and industrial components of the manufacturing industry, where we have three case owners named CRF, which is uh, in Italy, AVL, which is in Austria, and Infineon, which is in Germany. And they have different cases, which include the painting process and the bodies of working area. Uh, for the CRF case, the testing factory for engines and the powertrain vehicles for the AVL case and the energy optimized global virtual factory in terms of the IFA case uh, for their pilot. Uh, we have one case from the food industry, uh, which is owned by the Yotis, uh, uh, Anonymous and Burkean Vimhan Kieteria, which is a company in Greece, and this is also uh, about the chocolate processing and manufacturing processes in their factory. 
And the third pilot category is about the metal manufacturing and processing industry, where we have four use cases owned by ASAS in Turkey, uh, DPS, which is the Lodge and Johnson Vision Care in uh, Ireland, as uh, the mana industry in Bulgary, and the Prima Electron 3D new in Italy. And they have to do about the trade generation facility in the industry, as far as the ASAS case is concerned, titanium, and alloys manufacturing for the medical device industry for GPS case, the energy consumption in iron and steel manufacturing industry as far as the mummy case is concerned, and the additive manufacturing for processing metal components as far as the Prima Electro and the 3D NT case is concerned. So basically what we're trying to do here, and as mentioned already, is that we are trying to find the framework that's going to span throughout the whole design operation continuum towards smart factors industrial manufacturing and this is going to be adaptable and achievable for every sustainability indicators by mainly achieving two goals to predict the energy consumption when these changes appear in the overall factory value chain and the second one is when the external cost conditions of the provided energy fluctuate due to the variations of the energy production market this is going to be fed into a system that's going to be autonomously updating the factory production line equipment or the process control loop and in the meantime, we're going also to provide training for the factory users and their administration towards achieving the best practices as far as the energy sustainability concept is concerned. If the other solution is trying to be in a systemic view approach and into a framework, uh, into an adaptable framework that's going to be solution instead of problem oriented. And this is something that is um, proving to be a challenge as we speak because different cases have different views on how they're going to be operating in terms of energy consumption, in terms of energy sustainability issues. So this is trying to be one of the main challenges that we are facing towards these projects. So this is where all this effort is going to be focused on in the next two years, as we are approaching the end of the first year of uh, the project right now. Um, just some technical uh, overview. This is the simplified view of the architecture. This was the concept level that was introduced in the description of action uh, document. And this is also something that's going to be further simplified into the six main components of the systemic architecture, um, which is the, uh, the cyber physical system based industrial data collection system, a big data analytics engine, the intelligent decision support system, a virtual factory, which is going to be providing the training for all the end users and the administrators of the factory sites, uh, the simulation and prediction engine, and the industrial management and visualization system. Uh, this is something that's going to be simplified with things that we view it because we are facing them as subsystems or sub models of the main element framework with some input variables putting into the system, performing these actions and then producing the output variables uh, towards the aims that we are achieving in. Um, finally, just to show you where we are in terms of the work packages and deliverables timeline, uh, we have started the project with uh, four main work packages beginning on Monday. By month three. Um, on month six, we started the work on work packages two, three, and four, which are the main technical work packages of the project, uh, leading up to month 10, which is work packet six uh, initiation. And we are here basically on month 11, towards the end of it, where we are collecting data, have some metric specification and some pilot details. Um, fine tuning in order to produce the protocol assessment to launch the pilot use cases. And we are trying to reach the first milestone of the project, which is the system architecture, the dissemination and exploitation plans, and the good quality and project management. We have six deliverables that are going to be submitted by the end of December. So this is something that we are working on and we are having good progress on it. And basically, this is also where the work package five, uh, which is related to the integration and the pilot uh, use cases are going to be starting and be realizing. Um, that's it. Uh, this is, uh, as I said, not so obvious. So no worries if you have any questions or if you have any uh, inquiries about what you have seen, please feel free to ask me or by the end of this uh, works, uh, progress. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Parajotis, for your uh, introduction. Uh, I, would leave now, I would leave now the floor to Andreas Miaudakis that uh, will uh, 
we present the standardization activities that are carried out. Please, Andrea, go ahead. Yes, sir. Give me a moment here to share my presentation. So, are you able to see the presentation? Hello, can yes, you hear me? Yes, oh. yes, yes. So, my name is Adrian Neodex. I work for Street Technology Solution and we are contributing. It is, we are part of the consortium of this uh, uh, project. Uh, I'm going to speak a little bit about the standardization uh, uh, in regards to Enderman and uh, what we have done and uh, what we have uh, seen. And of course, uh, at the end of this uh, uh, presentation, or maybe in, in, uh, at the end of the all the presentation, we have a discussion and uh, involve this uh, about what should be our next steps, our target, and so on. Uh, so, why standardization? Standardization uh, is important, and uh, uh, because standards can ensure compatibility, comparability, and deliverability of uh, a product you create. And also, uh, standards can build the trust uh, with your customer, with customer. Uh, this is because uh, a standard provides all the a transparent view and a clear view about uh, what customers should expect for a product. Uh, and uh, of course, on a macroeconomic level, uh, standardization directly contributes to countries' economic growth. Uh, standardization uh, also can work uh, to work boosting profitability for individual companies. Uh, standardization processes work to build an, uh, a nurture international network based on principle of openness and transparency to exchange ideas and, uh, and uh, practices. And uh, the co-creation of process of standardization supports uh, an open innovation and cross industry innovation. So, different sectors can cooperate together towards the standards. And uh, this uh, works to develop new market and achieve uh, economic growth. Uh, uh, now, if we focus on in innovation and in research projects like Enderman, uh, standards, of course, uh, play an uh, uh, important role uh, for innovation by codifying information, the state of the art of uh, particular technology. Uh, can enable dissemination, knowledge, and interoperability of uh, important provide platform for further innovation. Uh, standard, so standards in innovation can promote, promote the compatibility and interoperability of uh, research and uh, results and uh, transfer research uh, results to the market uh, the, to ensure the reliability and compatibility of uh, the activities or results. Uh, reassure consumer and other regarding the safety of uh, your innovation, of the innovation of the of a project. Uh, display display some kind of mark of product of progress quality of process or process sorry quality, uh, and uh, enhance project uh, long term impact. And uh, in the case of uh, our uh, project, which is towards the energy efficiency. Uh, standard can play a key role in improving energy efficiency in the manufacturing pro processes across different sectors, geographical regions, and communities, as it can provide guidance for industrial facilities to integrate energy efficiency uh, into their uh, management practices. Uh, according to our DA, uh, our DOA, and uh, animals. Uh, project and standardization had specific goals. The first one is to assess the compliance of the Enerman framework with existing standardization efforts and identify the Enerman added value to such industrial standards. Uh, assess the compliance of, uh, uh, sorry, create of a plan to disseminate the Enerman solution to existing standard and promote the adoption of the approach in existing or emerging standard or certification approaches on energy sustainability. Invite and involve standardization and certification body stakeholders to contribute their experience in their consortium, something like what we are trying to do today. Uh, structure the NMR pro, uh, project 
το ένα σας να βρείτε regulation, ε, ε, action as well as industrial manufacturing process, energy sustainability certification approach and collect feedback by creating links with active regulation bodies and certification entities. And finally, participates in the evolution of relevant standard, pushing the results of animal innovation activity. Uh, the foreseen impact on standardization for Enerman. So Enerman foresees to develop and deliver best, best practices with respect to energy efficiency, driven, driven by standardized procedures and the relevant standardization bodies. Uh, specification of standardization, uh, of, sorry, of standardized regulation framework for energy efficiency uh, processes in uh, multiple industry manufacturing environments, continuous monitoring of standardization body ensuring significant impact on their work, engagement of external stakeholders to the manufacturing ecosystem willing to implement NMR deployments. Uh, and uh, for this, we, we, the NMR project has set uh, three related KPI. The, the name of them is the deliver of best practices with respect to energy efficiency. Uh, the number of standards that will identify used and potentially affected by the Enerman project. And the final, the number of external stakeholders in the manufacturing ecosystem that could be engaged and express their interest, interest in uh, deploying uh, Enerman best practice as the outcome of this uh, project. So, Enerman standardization approach. Uh, we start creating a methodology and uh, this uh, since is the first years of the project and uh, since uh, the project still uh, involves, uh, we are uh, updating this approach, but uh, the first step is uh, to identify uh, of identification of standards used by partners and especially the use case owner, the panel owners that are uh, real industries. Uh, then uh, we have to identify the Enerma technologies and outcomes that may be uh, of standardization uh, interest. In other words, to see what is uh, uh, probable to affect or uh, create a new standardization uh, uh, activities or uh, uh, standards. Uh, identification of uh, targeted bodies, groups, and etc. etc. to see uh, where we can uh, uh, disseminate our uh, standardization intentions. Uh, the identification of uh, uh, NMAS potential stakeholders who, who could be the uh, potential uh, users of uh, the NMAR uh, proposition. Uh, the monitor of standardization landscape to see what is out there at, at uh, the time uh, and uh, see how this involves uh, with our project or as our project uh, is executed. Uh, uh, and this is, can be within European countries, within various business sectors, uh, new technologies that arrive and uh, of course uh, legislation and uh, regulation. And the orchestrate contribution and interaction to relevant standardization initiative. And uh, what tools we can uh, use for this? Uh, so we have created the NMR standardization repository. It is a, a file uh, shared among the consortium where we can uh, uh, have all the information related to uh, existing standardization. Uh, bodies we know, standards, uh, initiative groups, and so on. Uh, uh, identify standard groups, initiative, working groups, etc. Upcoming and past events, events we can record uh, possible events that we can uh, participate or record the participation in events we have already done. Uh, publication related to standardization. Uh, of course, standardization of workshop as uh, the one we are uh, having now. Uh, the Standard Plus Innovation uh, site uh, that uh, provides information about national standardization bodies, uh, 
leaks and liaison with other projects. And of course, uh, more tools to be added uh, as the project, project evolves. As I said before, this is the first year of the project and uh, uh, typically in the first year, you don't have uh, a lot to do about standardization because you don't have uh, uh, concrete outcomes. So this is a view of the certification regulation or uh, standardization certification regulation repo. I will through the through this uh, presentation I use the term standardization, but also uh, for convenience this also includes the certification regulation uh, processes, initiatives, and so on. So this is maintained on this is maintained on our project repository based on. Uh, Google Space uh, and it will be updated throughout the project lifetimes, lifetime. Uh, have information about what this initiative can be found uh, under this title on the specific folder of, the, of our repository. So, uh, what's the, the Enerma sector? As uh, it, it was referred before by Panagiotis, uh, we have a uh, the NMR pro proposition <clears throat> should be tested and demonstrated in uh, three industrial sectors. The first one, the first one is related to appliance industrial components, uh, manufacturing industry, automotive manufacturing, and semiconductor manufacturing. Uh, the second uh, sector is the food industry, and the third uh, uh, sector is the metal uh, manufacturing processing industry, where we have aluminium industry. Titanium manufacturing for medical device industry, iron and steel manufacturing industry, uh, additive and uh, uh, manufacturing processing metal components. Uh, so far, uh, identified both in Israel, etc. Of course, uh, one of the most important here is Sense and Elec, which is the international, the sorry, the European Committee for Standardization. And an association that brings together uh, the, na the national standardization body of for, uh, 34 European countries and uh, is responsible for the salvation of the uh, uh, SENELEC, which is part of SEN, is the responsible part of uh, for standardization in the area of electrical engineering with a variety of, of sectors. And <clears throat> Uh, towards this uh, trial, we have identified the national number from consortium member countries. That means uh, we have uh, several partners from different pa countries. We've grouped these countries and we uh, have identified and visited the sites of the national level of, the co of, uh, of, this, of those countries. So for Italy, we have Comitato Electrotecnico Italiano. This is the site. Also, I have uh, in this presentation, I have also included the links of those uh, organizations in order uh, after we have the, uh, the, the presentation stored, we can access those sites if, if anyone if, if he likes. For Austria, we have the Austrian uh, uh, Association of VE. Uh, for France, we have Association Francaise de Normalization, AFNOR, for Cyprus, we have the Cyprus Organization for Standardization, CYS. For Greece, we have the National Quality Infrastructure System, uh, NQIS, or a lot. Uh, uh, for Germany, you have the German Commission for Electrical Electronics Information for DIN and VDE, DKE is the name. For Ireland, we have the National Standard Authority of Ireland, NSAI. For Bulgaria, we have the Bulgarian Institute of Standardization. For Turkey, we have the Turkey Standard Institution, and for Switzerland, we have the Association for Electrical Engineering Power Information Technologies, Electro Swiss. Uh, of course, we have the, in an international level, there's the International Organization for Standardization, which is an independent, not government international organization that brings together experts to share knowledge and develop. Uh, voluntary, consumer-based, market-relevant national standards that support innovation, but that provide solutions to global uh, challenges. Again, here we have identified the national members for from consortium member countries, and for Italy we have the Italian national unification. We have the Austrian standard international. 
for France, we have uh, again Afnur here, Association of the Normalization. For Cyprus, the same organization for Senelec is also for ISO member. So this is uh, Cyprus organization uh, for standardization. For Greece, we have again a lot here, uh, National Quality Infrastructure System. For Germany, we have, uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this properly in English, but it's DIN. I think we have also representative here in our work workshop. Uh, for, I for Ireland, again, we have NSAI. For Bulgaria, again, we have BDS. And for Turkey, the same with ISO. And for Switzerland, we have the Association of the Normalization, SNV. Uh, of course, we have an international, the International Electro Electrotechnical Commission, uh, which is a global non-profit membership organization, uh, work under print quality infrastructure and at international trading in electrical and electronic goods. Uh, it's uh, supporting innovation, affordable infrastructure development, efficient and sustainable energy access, uh, smart urbanization, and so on. Uh, brings together more than 50, uh, 170 countries and provides global uh, neutral and independent standardized platform to 20,000 uh, experts uh, at the global level. It administers four conformity assessment systems uh, in order to certify, to certify system devices, installation services. Uh, it publishes around uh, uh, 10. Uh, Thousand PX international standards with uh, together with uh, uh, a boom machine component assessment provide technical framework that allows government to build national quality infrastructure. Uh, and the uh, EAC international standards serves as the basic for risk quality assessment and, and uh, are used in testing certification to verify that uh, manufacturing promises are kept. And this is also the home page for IEC. Uh, we have also identified other uh, initiatives as, uh, as is as, uh, SRIDA, the Strategic Research Innovation Development Centre, which is, uh, let's say, uh, a, a mix of A, data and robotics sectors, that, uh, def and uh, the goal is to define the vision, overall goals, and main uh, technical and non-technical priorities, investment areas, and uh, research innovation, and uh, the development uh, roadmap for the Europe PPPs. Uh, the, the scope here is that A, data and robotics are, uh, can combine uh, together to solve the uh, greatest uh, challenges such as uh, environmental, and environmental sustainability, energy, food and water security, and improve the quality of uh, life. Here is a link to this uh, organization. Uh, we have the International Energy Agency, uh, which uh, works with governments and distance to share secure and sustainable energy future for all, uh, is, and it's at the head of global dialogue on energy, providing authoritative analysis, data, policy recommendation, a real world solution to help countries provide secure sustainable for all. And uh, this uh, agency also offers uh, the IEA, a technology collaboration program for uh, efficient energy and, uh, use and end use equipment abbreviators for e and uh, the scope of this is to promote energy efficiency as a key to ensure safe reliable affordable and sustainable energy system and that is as an international platform for collaboration between the government the 4e tcp provides policy guidance to its member and governance concerning energy using equipment assessment also the link for this is here we have identified the clean energy ministerial which is a, a high-level global forum to promote policies and programs that advance clean energy technology, to share lesson learns and best practices, and to encourage the transition to a global clean energy. Uh, uh, also, with regards to the International Society of Automation, ISA, well known, develops standards, certifies industry professionals, provides education and training publishes books and technical articles and hosts conferences and exhibitions for automation professionals. The Alliance for Internet of Things Innovation, IoT, that drive business policy, research innovations, and development of the IoT, edge computing, and other 
Compared technology across the digital value chain to support digitalization in Europe and compared to the of Europe. Uh, and uh, here, uh, ways we could present the ways that the research project can interact with a national standardization organization. And this information will come from Sen and Senelec. And they are foreseen for, uh, for uh, let's say, actions with the screening of existing standard which gives you access to leading knowledge and resources, the join of an existing standardization community, where you can exchange ideas and perspectives on ongoing work to revise an existing European standard or develop a new one, follow the processes by European uh, standard organization of Sen or Senelec, and uh, the fast track for, to uh, new standardization uh, this is done by creating a center leg workshop agreement, CWA. We, have, we will see this in more details below. So screening exists data on a national, European and international level provide access to the state of the art in the domain. Uh, standards are a source of conceptual knowledge. Uh, national organization can identify relevant standardization communities identify existing standards and start other development and assist uh, you to clarify how your contribution to standardization create an impact for your project. And this is why we have uh, identified uh, uh, the national standardization organization of uh, our consortium countries because it could be uh, a nice approach to, uh, to contact them and uh, exchange, uh, first uh, show them our uh, proposition, what Enerman is about and uh, of course uh, assist us in our standardization efforts. And finally, advice on most suitable standardization routes uh, that we should take. Uh, the exchange of opinions of going to work in gains access to first hand information to prepare a take of results by the market. And uh, this uh, national uh, so the organizers can uh, appoint an R&D representative to relevant national technical committees and connect us to European international standardization communities. Advice on how desired content can fit into existing standard or standard other development. And uh, uh, then the revision of an existing European standard or development new one. So if there's a need of a, a need to identify to revise or develop a standard, the due process of uh, Sen or Senelec has to be followed. And again, here, national organizations can assist on drafting uh, and submitting proposal for revision of existing standard or for static development new standard. And manage the ongoing work of the technical committee or working group, advice on structure, contents, and wording of the uh, standard. And finally, the fast track to new standardization. Uh, there's a tool called Sense and Leg Workshop Agreement, as I said before, which is European standardization delivery, specifically designed to meet uh, the needs of uh, and I project. And the drafting time is about uh, six to twelve uh, months. And this, uh, the outcome of this is it can be further developed to a uh, European standard or, or to be integrated into an existing one. Here is a link for information about this. Uh, uh, effort here and national standardization organization, organization again can support the proposal in, in, in initiating the Senate workshop. Identify the vice stakeholder to this work group, manage the going work of the work group of the workshop, uh, establish and manage communication channel to the related technical commission of the input and raise awareness. And support to reach uh, uh, consensus. Uh, advice on structured contents and wording of the uh, Sense and Elect Workshop Agreement. Ensure that uh, the regulation concerning governing uh, the workshop is uh, adhered to, to the publication of this uh, uh, agreement. And advice and on follow up to maximize exploitation of the standardization. Deliverables. Uh, here also we have some standards that are related to Enerman. The, some of them maybe already we'll see later in the presentation that uh, already are uh, used by industry partners. Uh, so identify standards the ISO 
5001, which is energy management standard, including all aspects of energy procurement and use. The ISO uh, 15746 uh, uh, of automation system integration, uh, integration of advanced process control and optimization, APCOs, capabilities for manufacturing systems. The ISO IAEC 27001, which is about uh, security. Uh, the ISO 14,044, which is environmental management, life cycle assessment, principle and framework requirement and guidelines. The ISO 31,000, which is about risk management. The IECTR 62.794, which is industrial process management control and automation. Uh, also, uh, except for standardization, we have uh, identified regulation bodies at the uh, EU and the national uh, level, which is the Council of European Energy Regulators here, the Energy Regulation Regional Association, ERA, uh, the European Union Agency for Cooperation of Energy Regulation, ACER, and uh, in, uh, in countries, again, from the consortium, we have the Italian uh, Regulation Authority for Energy Network and Environment, ARERA. We have the Italian, Italian National Agency for New Technology, Energy and Sustainable Economic Development, EMEA. For Ireland, we have Commission for Regulation of Utilities. Uh, for Austria, we have E-Control. For Germany, we have the Federal Network Agency for Electric Gas and Transport Railway. Uh, for Turkey, we have the Energy Manager Regulatory Authority, EMRA. For France, we have a Regulatory Commission of Energy, CRE. For Switzerland, we have Federal Electric Commission, INCOM. For Greece, we have a, a Regulatory for Authority for Energy, ORI. For Cyprus, we have Cyprus Energy Regulation Authority, which is CERA. And for Bulgaria, we have Energy and Water Regulatory Commission, EWRC. And finally, ah, okay, I have the Switzerland. And with the gas certification uh, here, uh, we don't, uh, till now we don't have uh, much of information. However, this is ongoing process, as I said before. So we have the Institute for Information, Transparency of uh, Procurement and Environment Compatibility, ITCA, the Association of uh, Issuing Bodies, AIFB, and of course the Energy Star, which is a, a US initiative. However, there is, uh, in, in this initiative, there's an Energy Star for building a plant. Uh, activity there, and also there's agreement between uh, EU and the uh, uh, US about the energy star. As you already have, I think you all know that uh, a lot of devices uh, contains the energy star mark on uh, their certification. So this uh, process here that also for buildings and industries, uh, so it's worth looking on this. So to conclude this presentation, uh, uh, a first step towards, uh, towards uh, energy standardization activities is the identification of uh, relevant standard bodies initiative and this information have been acquired. So, and uh, of course, this is an on, ongoing, uh, per, uh, ongoing uh, activity. We have created a repository and the store of this uh, information. We have also, we're going to include this formation in the first deliverable on the standardization activities of Enerman. Uh, we have, as I said before, the standardization related repo that uh, have been created and maintained. Uh, organization of uh, standardization works like this one. This is the first one. We are going to have another two during the project lifetime. And the scope of this is to have uh, uh, more participants, especially for uh, for externals of the project, and with with uh, focus on stakeholders and standardization uh, initiative groups, working groups, etc. Uh, of course, uh, identify events to participate in order to disseminate the outcomes of our project and get feedback on our uh, outcomes. Uh, to keep monitoring the standardization landscape, as I said uh, before, uh, and maybe an approach is, is to set responsible per sector and per country that can uh, provide this uh, can uh, provide this activity. 
Uh, of course, to investigate the project out and that may have a standardization interest, that means to see what uh, it could be included in uh, a standardization or what would be interested in the standardization group on initiative, etc. Uh, identify potential sectors for NMR proposition, that means uh, beside the use case uh, sectors we have already on the uh, on, the, on our project to see where else this uh, approach would be uh, of interest and uh, create links with active regulation bodies and certification entries and of course uh, to liaison also with uh, other projects uh, in, uh, in the same uh, uh, sector of uh, NRMA. Uh, Thank you for attention. Uh, so the floor is back to CRF. Thank you, Andreas, Thank you. for this detailed presentation. Uh, now I will jump to the presentation of uh, the Denim project uh, by Marco Rocchetti. Hello. Good morning. I'm going to share my desktop. So, uh, please let me know if uh, are you able to see in full screen? Not yet. Oh. I, I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> because. I see it in in full uh, in full screen. Uh, you, you share the the full uh, the full screen or uh, yes, I share the entire desktop. I'm sharing, but I can try to change again. It's okay. Okay. Now. okay. Yeah. So thank you for uh, this opportunity. My name is uh, Marco Rocchetti and I represent r 2 solution that covered the role of uh, exploitation leader in the Denim project. In this presentation, we will see an overview of the Denim project, the standardization activities we are uh, in plan uh, to do and we have done until today in Denim the Energy Efficiency Directive, an introduction of the main points, an introduction of uh, the standard 60,247 part one that regards energy audit and uh, the, the main aspect of the uh, energy audit for uh, industrial uh, pilot, and an introduction of the ISO 50001 for the energy management system. Few words about r 2 m solution. We are uh, an SME, Italian SME. Our headquarter is in Pavia, as a, a medium city, one hour from Milan in the north of Italy. Um, our team uh, now collects um, 60 people in four different branches uh, in Italy, Spain, France, and UK. And uh, our main business may cover uh, three different uh, sectors innovation. In general, uh, we help uh, we help uh, company to um, to bring innovation uh, and uh, participate in European uh, projects. Our main, main uh, target is to use the result of um, innovation and the research project uh, in the market. So we aim to sell the result of uh, uh, European project. And we are also active uh, partner in uh, lead, brim, uh, and uh, wheel uh, certification for uh, buildings. Uh, the Denim project. Denim uh, means uh, digital intelligence for collaborative energy management in manufacturing. Our main objective is to uh, develop an inter 
Interoperable Digital Intelligence Platform, able to collaborate uh, with uh, the, the industrial uh, energy management. So in few words, we will use a different technology, different ICT models and uh, uh, approach to collect information from the um, production lines and uh, directly um, collection, collecting data from the machines, optimize the production with uh, holistic models and uh, provide information able to reduce uh, energy consumption uh, waste from the, the, the production lines and uh, increase the performance of the energy production in different uh, sectors. Here you can see uh, the um, six main uh, aspects of Denim. We want to produce secure and uh, real-time data collection. We want to guarantee an holistic approach to energy efficiency. We will provide the continuous event drive and analysis based on accurate models of the machines and the uh, production lines. We will work with uh, digitalization support and collabor collaborative uh, decision making uh, tools. An important uh, uh, point is the integration on the renewable energy in the production line and uh, improve the cell consumption from renewable energy. And uh, at the end of this list, but uh, with uh, relevant importance, uh, is the um, analysis of the skills, the, the, the worker skills, and uh, the improvement of the contribution of uh, each uh, uh, worker to the um, digitalization framework and to the uh, energy efficiency of the uh, entire uh, production line. The consortium is uh, composed by 13 partners, divided in uh, five academic uh, partners and uh, eight uh, technology providers. The uh, project uh, coordinator is uh, Moster uh, Technological University in Ireland. And uh, we have uh, four different pilots uh, in Italy, in uh, Spain, in uh, Slovenia and in uh, Ireland. Our activities around uh, standards. So uh, in, in few words, we can present uh, what we have uh, in plan to do and what we have done uh, regarding uh, integration uh, of, st of standards and promoting new standards. The first point is the, the screening of existing standards. So uh, this point uh, is generally the same uh, previously presented presented by my the, the, uh, colleague of uh, uh, Enerman project and uh, regards the analysis of uh, re relevant standard interested by the uh, pilot and by the denim activities. We aim to join and to participate in the standardization community. We are collecting uh, stakeholders and we are uh, working around uh, uh, possibility to improve uh, uh, new standards and participate in uh, uh, activity around uh, new standards. And the last point, yes, is uh, essentially the uh, integration of uh, innovation produced by Denim in uh, new standards or in the improvement of uh, existing standards. Here I report just the National Standards Authority of Ireland because uh, it is uh, uh, contact uh, from the project coordinator, but uh, we aim to work uh, with uh, all the other partners in Italy, Slovenia, Spain, uh, and uh, uh, in all the countries where uh, the Denim partners are, uh, are working now. So the um, activities in Denim. Denim is in the first year uh, of uh, life. Here you, you can see the four pilots, a medical device uh, factory in Ireland, a steel manufacturing industry in uh, Spain, a um, tool uh, uh, factory, so yes, a um, manufacturing uh, factory in, uh, in Slovenia, and a small uh, mechanical company industry in the north of Italy. The importance of uh, 
the analysis of the, the pilot is in the uh, in the baseline definition and in the analysis of the, the starting point for the denim improvement. On the line four, you can see in, in this table the current state of uh, energy management uh, in the four pilots. We can see, for example, that uh, some pilots uh, um, already works with the, the ISO 50001. The, uh, for example, the Spanish uh, pilot uh, uh, has uh, a lot of energy meters already installed and is able to work with the light cycle analysis. We have um, different uh, analysis of uh, metrics in uh, Slovenia, but uh, without any kind of certification. And the last point is uh, the small company in Italy where we are not uh, uh, able to collect uh, nothing for the moment. And uh, we will improve the entire uh, denim system, uh, considering the, the, the the, 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 the condition where we have not uh, already done, yes. In this first point, uh, we work to analyze the baseline and uh, the, uh, the procedure uh, planned is the energy audit. So the, here we have different question regarding energy audit. So what is an energy audit? is uh, a normalized uh, activities. Uh, there are uh, standards around uh, energy audit uh, and so on. So this first uh, uh, standardization point uh, worked around uh, the uh, definition of uh, energy audit. And essentially we have uh, deeply analyzed uh, three different uh, points. The energy uh, efficiency directive, the uh, European standard uh, 60,247 part one and the ISO 50001 regarding the energy management. So the main three points that define what is an energy audit, what is the uh, strategy to improve an energy audit uh, and to develop an energy audit uh, in a different uh, situation, but essentially uh, these three Two standards and one directive provide us all the information uh, necessary to, to work uh, in the um, baseline definition. The first point is the <clears throat> analysis of the directive number 27 of 2012, that uh, is the energy efficiency directive. Why this uh, directive uh, is uh, important? Because it is the first directive that uh, establish a set of uh, measures and uh, define energy measures target for the European countries. From the 20% uh, we arrived uh, to um, in the last uh, in the last re uh, review at 32.5% of uh, energy reduction target uh, at uh, uh, 2030 respect to the baseline of the 2007. The article one uh, explain the scope of this uh, directive and uh, point the, 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 the first stone around uh, the needs to reduce uh, energy in uh, each European countries, but uh, in uh, different, also in different kinds of sectors. The Article 7 uh, explain uh, the obligation scheme. So each uh, uh, member state have to define internally different uh, level of target for the energy reduction, re uh, reduction. but uh, the, um, th this scheme is important because uh, uh, set the obligation for uh, different uh, uh, kind of parting. For example, energy distributors, energy uh, uh, sales company are obliged to reduce uh, and to provide, uh, reduce the, the impact, the, the, the CO2 emission impact and to provide, uh, improve energy efficiency uh, measure in different level of uh, production, distribution, uh, etc. And uh, at the end, article uh, number eight, uh, define what is uh, an energy audit and uh, uh, it is the first uh, um, 
article, the first uh, direct, that uh, define what is an energy audit. So the energy audit is a defined procedure uh, with the purpose to obtain an adequate knowledge around uh, an energy consumption profile. So the, 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 um, the role of the energy audit is to, is to define uh, the energy consumption profile, so to analyze the baseline, the current situation. The energy audit is the tools defined to produce energy savings, so energy efficiency measures have to work around an energy audit. It is uh, the second stone. Um, Article 8.16 uh, define the uh, people, the, 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 um, uh, as I can say, the, um, the expert that uh, are uh, uh, able to produce uh, an energy audit. So, so not, not uh, all the um, technic technician or engineer, engineer can produce an energy audit. We need uh, a qualified uh, figure and you have to be accredited in a, as an expert of energy for uh, uh, senior energy audit and to produce an energy audit aligned with the, uh, this directive. And the uh, last point, uh, define uh, um, different kind of uh, uh, companies and define who is uh, obliged to perform an energy audit. Uh, large company and the energy intensive company are obliged to follow this uh, regulation and to produce an energy audit uh, uh, every four years. How DENIM uh, works around this uh, procedure and uh, how we have uh, uh, produced results from this procedure. Here you can see five uh, box that represent five steps of uh, analysis done in each pilot. The first point is the preliminary contact where our expert uh, collect information from uh, the pilots and uh, um, produ production a contextualization for, for the energy consumption. It's also important to analyze the boundary condition of the energy audit and uh, the, the, the limit of the, the, the analysis. The data collection follow uh, specific requests uh, done by the, um, uh, the, the the leader to the uh, pilots and the the point number three essentially represents the site inspection unfortunately due, due to the covid uh, restriction this point uh, uh, was not able to to be performed and uh, we have uh, worked worked in a different way so uh, site inspection has been uh, substituted by a series of uh, telco where uh, uh, R2M analyzed the, the data collected by the partners and uh, uh, elaborate a, a different questionnaire, different question to uh, better understand the condition, the energy condition and the uh, energy use around uh, the pilot. So it is essentially a series of uh, telco, uh, bilateral telco with, with the, the pilot. The data analysis, uh, the final data analysis, produce the um, the result, the yes, the key performance indicators and the result of the diagnosis, and finally uh, the report uh, uh, and the presentation of the report to the to the pilots. Um, here we can see the first standards uh, uh, analyzed in in Denim, and uh, it is the Europe, uh, SEN Select Standards uh, 60,247 Part 1. It is, uh, th this uh, standard is divided in four different parts, but uh, we, we have considered only the, the first part that is the, the general uh, uh, informative uh, around the, the, the needs and the, the uh, definition of uh, the audit uh, structure. In fact, the standard specifies the requirement and the common methodology uh, and the deliverable for an energy audit. 
uh, define uh, the form of uh, establishment for uh, different organization, define uh, uh, an harmonized and common aspect for uh, perform an energy audit uh, in different type of uh, uh, buildings and different type of uh, services, and uh, uh, define the structure for uh, uh, commercial, industrial and uh, uh, public entities. Uh, uh, so essentially, apart from uh, private dwelling, uh, the, um, uh, the methodology is the same uh, uh, for each uh, kind of uh, sector, essentially. The definition uh, of energy audit, uh, we have already uh, analyzed the uh, definition of energy audit in the previous slide. Uh, here we can see that uh, uh, the energy audit uh, is based on the energy performance indicator. So uh, we have to define KPIs because we need to uh, indicate, we have to, to fix um, uh, a value for analyze uh, the baseline and the performance that we can reach improving uh, the baseline with uh, uh, efficiency measures. And the, the point number three obviously represents the definition of uh, efficiency measure that it is uh, an action, um, an improvement of the baseline uh, able to produce uh, a reduction of uh, energy consumption and an optimization of, uh, uh, in this case, of the production uh, line. In this slide, you can see the structure of uh, the uh, analysis performed in an energy audit and the different level of key performance indicator that we can uh, collect and define uh, from uh, each uh, factories. The level A represents the analysis of the energy vectors, so um, all the energy vectors uh, um, used by the, the factories. We can see different uh, uh, vectors, for example, uh, electrical energy, uh, natural gas, uh, district heating, uh, etc. And uh, uh, below, at uh, level C, you can uh, you can see three different main uh, uh, consumption line. We can we can call uh, uh, consumption line because we have to divide the principal activities in this case are the uh, production line, the machines consumption, etc. Uh, by the auxiliary services that in this situation can be represented by air compression unit, uh, um, etc. Ser um, consumption that uh, uh, provide useful uh, helps to the principal activities and general services, for example, lighting, heating, uh, air conditioning, uh, uh, set consumption, etc. Um, then the, the output of uh, an energy audit has to produce different line, different uh, profile of consumption for uh, uh, principal activities, auxiliary services, general services, and define the best way to represent these uh, uh, level of consumption by K performance indicator. The last point uh, is the ISO 50001 standard. Why this uh, standard is important uh, at this level? So we have seen that uh, um, large company and uh, energy intensive company are obliged to follow the uh, obligation and to uh, perform energy audit uh, every four years, apart from the company that uh, uh, follow the, so, um, the company certified by ISO 50001. This is a, a standard, a volunteer standard certification process and essentially represent the same project, process of an energy audit. And it means that if you are certified the 50, ISO 50001, you are um, already perform, uh, performing a continuative energy audit into the uh, factories, essentially. Um, and uh, it means that you uh, 
you are working with uh, uh, an energy monitoring and management system. Uh, in general, this uh, scheme works around uh, data collection and a systematic approach able to uh, control energy performance targets and energy performance indicator. Um, this is the reason why uh, if you are certified, you are not obliged to follow the um, obligation of uh, um, the, ener the energy efficiency directive. The uh, strategy where uh, energy, uh, um, ISO 50001 uh, standard is uh, based is the Plan Do Check Act uh, that is represented in this figure. And uh, essentially it is uh, an iter iterative uh, series of four uh, steps that uh, start from the planning of uh, uh, energy policies and uh, energy action do that represent uh, the, um, uh, the the point where you start to analyze the uh, the current situation check where you are to check the monitored uh, ana data analyze the data correct uh, eventually uh, by eventually action and uh, uh, analyze uh, uh, efficiency measure able to reduce the impact uh, of energy into the, the process and hacked uh, means make uh, in uh, uh, improving in the in the production side what you have in mind to uh, to do and uh, um, in plan with the, uh, the, the the efficiency measures so uh, these uh, points uh, represent what we have done uh, until today in uh, in denim and uh, represent the the regulation and the standard used uh, in this first year uh, to produce uh, uh, the pilots uh, uh, energy audit and to define the pilot baseline uh, from this point, uh, in the next uh, action, we aim to analyze deeply uh, different kind of standards. For example, uh, standard uh, related to the data collection uh, into the machine and uh, obviously um, standards for uh, um, the integration of energy management system in, uh, in the production line. And uh, so um, this is our plan essentially. So for my point is, uh, that's it. Thank you, Marco, for your uh, very nice presentation. Um, if uh, if there is some question, uh, I, I would propose to, to have it later because now I would leave the floor to to Lydia Vogt because uh, she has to leave us uh, at, uh, at 11, so uh, if, it's okay. We can have the break uh, after the, Lydia's presentation. Okay. Hello. Okay. Thank okay. You. Hello. Thank you very much. So, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, All we right. can. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So, um, I hope you can also see my presentation. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So, I'm just. Checking right. Okay. okay. Can you see it now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, well, thank you very much. Um, also for me, those two or three presentations were really interesting <laughs> to see um, your approach to standardization in your two projects and what you have planned and what is your strategy. So um, this has been already quite um, thorough. <laughs> so uh, as I'm now jumping in, I'm perhaps getting uh, to, to a more broader level to, to give you a bit more about the, um, well, let's say an overview again about sensation and what sensation can mean to projects. And um, yeah, just explain some, some sensation deliverables perhaps in a bit more detail. So just as a start, just 
to give you again perhaps like a bigger picture okay why is sterilization and why is also sterilization uh, important to you so in the end it's it's a means to to make things work and also to assure that the results your framework and um, all the developments you 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 make in your project um, in the end will be will be useful and also will be used by by um, other stakeholders, interested parties, and so on. And that's here. Yeah, it's a good uh, example. So whenever you've got some result and some development and so on, a process, and where it is of high importance that it works with other systems. You definitely have to make sure that it does work with those systems and does it fit as here the plug and um, the socket. So that's the general idea of sanitization and um, yeah, that's also I think a good good um, motivation of, of <laughs> why you also um, well can perhaps also, maybe also should in, get involved. Um, yeah, so just um, Another quick glance at where I'm from. So I'm uh, I'm from Dean. So that's the German Institute for Sensation. Um, Andreas already um, mentioned um, our organization uh, as one of the many that exist. So we are we are from Germany. We're located in Germany in Berlin, and also as many of the other European sensation organizations, we are also partners to research projects. And as uh, as a partner, we um, are um, responsible for the standardization activities within a project. Um, yeah. So, but of course now um, I'm just here <laughs> to get the insight into NMN, for example, project. Also, give you a bit of an overview of of the general standardization landscape. So. Also here, I mean, you already had quite in detail <laughs> the different organizations on the different levels. Well, so here you can see what what we think of it. Um, we we are some sort of a, of a big house. So we've got the different levels, so different floors, so to say. So we've got the international, the European, and the national levels. Um, but those levels they are not separated. But we do work together, and of course, we make sure that on national levels, the standards uh, confirm to the European and the international levels. We do work together. The different committees are interconnected, and um, so so the bases are actually the the uh, the national committees that join the different uh, levels and contribute the work and uh, make sure that the process. Um, well, yeah, <laughs> uh, runs smoothly. That's to say that in the end, actually, it's not the sensation uh, organizations that do the work, but the experts. So we, what Dean, for example, and Uni and BSI and so on, Afnor, Afnor uh, those organizations make sure that the process uh, does work and runs smoothly, but the input that comes from the experts. And that's also, I mean, quite important for you to to perhaps to notice that um, the whole standardization uh, work depends on people giving their input, their expertise, and so on. So, you as a project, um, this is of high relevance also for us that you contribute to uh, your new ideas and results to the standardization landscape deliverables and so on. So of course we also are very much interested to have your knowledge and that you are <laughs> kind of on board onto our onto our um, yeah work developments and so on. So that just to say, let's jump into <laughs> your your work and the sensation goals um, that. That are pursued within a research project. I mean, these points have already been discussed very much in detail in the in the um, presentation before. So just, I mean, um, now again a, a broader uh, point of view on this. So what what actually as I j just mentioned, what the standardization community uh, gains from your uh, involvement. 
Now again, um, or on the other side, okay, what, what is your benefit from when you actually put work into that? Uh, and for example, develop a standardization document or join a, a committee on their standardization work. So um, these are those three main points, so to say. So first of all, the compliance with standards. Um, I mean, by having this list of standards and you to know what standards exist, you in the end improve the user acceptance by complying to the latest standards. Then um, when engaging, so interaction standardization, um, you do have a ex and you do have access to a huge network on European and international um, level. And um, of course, I mean, that's, that is um, a way of, um, of um, guaranteeing a sustainable and long-term dissemination as all the input you, you will give or the do document you will de develop, they will, um, they will be there um, af also after the project has ended and your ideas will be picked up, for example, I mean, that's, that's an option. Uh, in the work of the technical committees and will uh, can be um, well can be put into for example, some standards and um, yeah and also in the end your input to standardization um, well is a possibility as an option to enhance the quality of the interoperability um, of your results within the project as um, you've got this exchange and interaction with the standardization committees, you get get to exchange your ideas and so on and so on. So I think these three points are, are quite strong and um, I think are a good motivation for you to not just do standardization work as it is listed uh, when, within your uh, DOA, but also to have some intrinsic uh, motivation for that. Um, yeah, so also here some, um, or here's just a short overview of the different um, what levels of research and that for each um, level there are fitting standards. So um, you've got a wide range as um, to determine what is actually relevant for you. I mean, you said you would like to um, develop a framework for, for energy management. So um, um, yeah, of course, but of course there are also other possibilities of, of, of what the content of a standard can be or specification. So it could be terminology and you could define interfaces. Um, is there a project product that exists or a service and so on. So all of these, all of these uh, different types um, of standards or, yeah, exist. So um, I think as we are already approaching <laughs> break time, I'm just a bit skipping through these different sensation deliverables, um, as you've already heard. So there, there is the standard. So um, that's, well, the ISO standard um, you've already heard of. But of course, there are other sensation deliverables, as for example, the specifications. And there are different ones on international level or European or so national level. And they, when you aim to develop a new standardization document within your project, those, let's say, uh, specification deliverables, they are your, your um, choice normally. And just to um, show you a bit the differences, so a standard that's a consensus based document um, and it's uh, for example provide rules guidelines and so on and um, but to deliver a standard um, it has to go through the the rigid rigid process of being developed um, as part of for example the sen uh, process iso process and so on so it is recognized by standardization body and that means that it also has to fit within the uh, timeline of, let's say, the technical committees working on that standard. And that's normally does not fit, well, it can, but that would be a lucky chance with the timeline of a European research project. So normally you would not um, develop a standard uh, within the timeline of your project. But 
of course, you can join technical committees and contribute to those, um, to those, uh, to the development of standards. On the other hand, so we've got the specifications, and um, so that there has the importance that it's developed outside the technical committee structure. Uh, it is open to the direct participation of anyone, rapid development, and so on, so on. So that's normally that's more the timeline that fits um, within research um, projects. And um, yeah, so we've you already heard of of this. So this is one of those deliverables. It's a SEN workshop agreement, so on European level. Um, that normally fits quite well with European research projects. So um, it is developed within uh, uh, a working group of interested uh, parties. And um, yeah, so it's, of course, it's voluntary application. And um, yeah, but in the end can be a basis for European or international standards. So it would be a basis document to um, to give to, for example, other technical committees so they can um, build upon this. Um, yeah, okay. So just uh, quickly, it's quite easy, this de development, so you don't have to make sure that uh, the whole sensation, uh, official sensation process is being followed. It is quite easier. And um, yeah, so then just um, also, <laughs> Uh, I think that that would have fitted that uh, um, to a slide before. Um, just also again some of the benefits we also see um, when we have been joining a lot of research projects as standardization partners. Um, so um, so the benefits are that that you bridge the gap uh, between the solution, your solution within the project and the global market. So you, you can, uh, you um, do have this market transfer, um, of course, so compliance um, is guaranteed. You've got the access to the network and of course the dissemination visibility. So in the end, it's also a dissemination um, opportunity. And to give you an example, so I've been involved with this uh, research project uh, reach 2020, so it's um, that was the topic of um, aging societies and uh, health solutions. And what we've done in, in this project um, was that um, there was a SEM workshop agreement developed. And um, then in the end, this SEM workshop agreement was also um, accepted, for example, by the German um, uh, committees. Um, and um, besides that, um, we also had the involvement, active involvement in the ISOTC. So we had had the connection to the ISOTC and um, partners from the research project contributed to um, the the uh, works of that uh, committee and had, of course, the exchange, mutual exchange between the research project and experts of, uh, of the ISO working groups and so on. And um, yeah, so I mean, that was quite, was quite successful and also was awarded by the um, Sen Senel Extenders Innovation Award, which was, um, which was quite good, which was, um, yeah, a good reward. And um, so we've seen also, or this is the coordinator, so Thomas Linne of the project, he has said that um, this was really, I mean, of course, it, mean, it meant work. Um, <laughs> the project partners had to do work and give input and so on and so on. But he said it was um, such, um, it opened up um, to, to the whole new range of, of, one, of a network. And um, so it also meant that uh, the collaboration with other EU projects, uh, projects uh, made possible and so on and so on. So just to give you in a glimpse of what has been done in another project. And in the end, I think, yes, so that's my final slide. Um, so what we've seen, what what is uh, going on on European level and especially um, with the European Commission. So we've seen that the interest in standardization um, has actually very much increased. So I mean, it has been it has been a point um, for standardization. Uh, sorry, for 
research projects for years, decades, and so on and so on. But now um, we see that there is um, there's a push into into the direction that to to push the importance of sanitation. And um, so just some examples here. So um, a repository of best practices has been um, has been um, has gone online. So it's not just about sensation, it is about um, all, uh, well, all range of, of best practices. So I mean, that's something also for you of interest, I think. To, so just have a look at it. And I mean, there are two sensation examples in there. Then we've got, for example, the fact sheet. Um, yeah, just to <laughs> explain a bit uh, what, uh, what is the connection between research projects and um, well, using standardization as a valorization um, pathway. And currently what is uh, being developed is, is a code of practice for researchers on standardization by the European Commission. And um, so to this point, there will be a stakeholder workshop taking place on 3rd of December. And um, yeah, so we are quite, uh, quite um, um looking forward to to this so because what what well what i think is that sensation is, is a powerful tool it is uh, very useful i mean of course i do say say this as uh, <laughs> i'm represent, representing dean no but uh in honest um it's it's something that um is is um is worthwhile pursuing but on the other hand, uh, not enough knowledge of this exists. So I think it's it's really good that it's pushed on the European level, and also to give some guidance to to research projects on how to um, pursue those um, standardization activities and so on. Yeah. So that that is then um, it leads me to the end. So um, well, thank you very much for the in invitation that I could give you a short glimpse into, um, let's say, the standardization community landscape. And um, yeah, so if you've got any questions now or so later, just just let me know. Um, you can write an email and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to staying in touch. So thank you very much. Thank you, Lydia, for your useful uh, presentation. Uh, I think that uh, if you have to leave, uh, we can uh, collect uh, yeah. the invece registro la bolletta doganale con IVA e tutto che vanno quello da più perché loro l'hanno tolto dalla fascia libertaria. Quindi Sorry. Okay. Uh, I was saying that the uh, 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 lasciato come era ieri mattina. Eh, adesso io le devo dire Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I didn't really get your point. Yes, if you have to leave uh, now, can I collect uh, the eventual question and then we can forward to you later. Okay, excellent. Yeah, okay. that sounds good. So as I have to leave now, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much and apologize for the, the, uh, the little later that we have uh, in the presentation. That's fine. Well, thank you. Uh, it was uh, very interesting. So we have a good workshop. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Lydia. OK, so uh, now I propose to have a short break to quarter to, to 11, quarter past 11. It's OK. OK. Yes. And, and please all fill, fill in your your answer uh, so that, that Marco circulate in the in chat. the chat. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye. See you in ten minutes. Welcome back uh, to everybody. I think that uh, we can uh, uh, start with the the uh, practices.
so I I can start sharing uh, um, sharing my screen and uh, introduce the the CRF use cases. So. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. So uh, CRF uh, use case uh, is uh, we have uh, two use cases uh, um, for the for the Enerman project. The the first one. Uh, is uh, on the painting process. Uh, we have uh, two uh, two different uh, unit uh, in the in the paint shop that are um, sensorized. The first one is the uh, the grazing tank of pre treatment, uh, and the second one is the air handling uh, unit uh, of top coat boat. Uh, we have uh, several sensor in, the, in this. Uh, in these use cases, uh, uh, mainly on uh, temperature, uh, relative humidity, uh, liquid flow rate, uh, uh, reform flow rate, uh, and uh, set point, and so on. Um, we have different uh, uh, model uh, input data and uh, um, dynamic input data from uh, from the field. Uh, the second uh, use case is on the, um, the building. Uh, we have uh, um, here you can see uh, the, um, the plant with uh, the, the sensor installed in the body shop uh, area. Uh, the, the, the input uh, uh, it's about the indoor temperature profile and the uh, energy consumption profile and um, the output is the, the, the building uh, characteristics uh, as a faster compact model. Uh, the, the standard that uh, we are actually using uh, in, uh, in Stellantis plant uh, are uh, about the, the ISO uh, 50,001 50, that we have already seen uh, before, that uh, specify the requirement that uh, an energy management system must have. Um, so the, the standard defines the, the requirements that are uh, able to the energy use and consumption for the measurement, the documentation, the design, uh, the purchase of equipment, and the, the process and the the personnel that uh, help determine uh, engine uh, performance. Uh, the other uh, standard that we are uh, actually using is uh, the legislative decree 81 uh, of uh, 2008 that uh, obliged the employer to assess all risk present in the workplace, include in the workplace, including uh, those related to the microclimatic condition. Uh, so the all the all the general indication for the comfort uh, about ventilation, temperature, humidity of the of the working uh, environment. Uh, okay, so I I finished uh, my my presentation. I would uh, leave the floor to the to the other. Uh, uh, Pilot to user. If I can, okay. Stop sharing screen. Okay. So, uh, if uh, DPS can uh, can present uh, his use case. Sure, I'll share my screen. Okay. Yep. All good. Okay. 
I'll start. So yeah, we're going to so we're going to present our use case. So this is uh, for Dupuy since um, based here in Cork in Ireland. So uh, part of Johnson and Johnson, um, they're a medical device manufacturer within J and J. We're going to going to use our site in Cork, and uh, you saw the denim presentation earlier. The den uh, Dupuy in Cork has also been used for one of the use cases in denim. So there's a bit of overlap there between ourselves and Enerman and what they're doing in denim. So just to be clear, I guess in denim, they're looking at kind of more of the exact uh, various production pieces of equipment. We're looking at more here at the base loads within Dupuy as part of the Enerman project. Um, what we produce in Enerman is the uh, orthopedic uh, implants, knees and hips. And I suppose it's a metal working energy intensive processes. And uh, this is why we need to look at ways to reduce our loads. Our use case objectives for the Enerman project is we're going to target the significant energy users in Dupuy. So we've identified those as our dust extraction units, air handling units, compressed air, boilers and chilled water. And what we'd ideally like to do is start mapping these significant energy users and making them flex more with our production output. So what we have at the moment, I suppose, our main issue is um, production goes up and down depending on demand, uh, but our energy profile doesn't follow it very well and that is primarily down to these uh, large significant energy users that sort of have a flat output and we, as part of anyone we want to add some flex into these base loads to measure better map uh, with the production outputs so if our production output goes down we see a better correlation in our, in our energy usage and as a result we improve our kilowatt hours per part uh, as a result so that's kind of the overall aim the standards used i suppose within johnson and johnson uh, I guess the Puy here um, is part of Campus Ireland, JNJ Campus Ireland, which means uh, that comprises of the Puy, uh, Vision Care, and all the Ansons that are in Ireland. And they kind of, um, from an ISO uh, 5001 uh, certification, they kind of go in as one group uh, for that certification for the energy management system. So they manage their energy as a, as a whole, at a kind of holistic level across all the sites in Ireland. Um, uh, which uh, like shared power purchase agreements and so on. Uh, we've also got 1,401 certifications, so uh, we're on the environmental management system. So we have the framework in place there to try and work uh, uh, to create an environmental management system. And uh, we also take part in the large industry energy network within Ireland, which is uh, basically a group of uh, large energy consumers in industry. Anybody who has a, a energy spend of over 1 million euros per year can be part of this group and they work together on initiatives to try and um, reduce energy as a whole across the uh, island of Ireland. So uh, Dupuy takes part in that and our energy targets are set for over a five year period. And what we're aiming for in 2025 is to be carbon neutral uh, across campus Ireland. So it's a ambitious target and uh, projects like Enerman are going to feed into that, uh, hopefully to help us hit that target. Uh, what we have in sight, so we're kind of lucky in Dupuy, we have fairly well sens sensorized site uh, using a automation network uh, with a kind of rough architect architecture like this. So I guess all our sensors, meters, uh, PLCs and so on, they all feed into the Kepware server uh, and all the data gets stored in the OSI Pi. Um, and the BMS also feeds in directly then into a reporting system that you can basically generate reports on any kind of data you want. So we're very flexible in the data we can provide into the Enerman project. Um, and we have, uh, yeah, we have a, a good data gathering infrastructure. And on the use cases themselves, so I mentioned what we're looking at here. So we want to look at the dust extract. We can use the meters we have installed, uh, production output and airflow. They'll all feed into the model. Uh, we'll hopefully use an element to control dust extract. Similarly, we have air handling units we're trying to look at. And again, the main parameters of interest here would be the meters that are installed on site and the outside air temperature data that we can get from the BMS. Um, compressed air, again, it's meters, production activity and supply pressure, and that's all sensorized as well uh, that we, we need to take into account for control. Um, and as mentioned, boilers, again, what we're looking here are meters installed, temperatures from the BMS, production and occupancy will all feed into that, uh, occupancy being a critical one uh, because it's uh, building heat basically. And then we have the chillers as well. Um, again, we'd have our meters installed. We have outside air temperature uh, sensors from the BMS and production activity would all feed into uh, how we want to control the chillers. Um, so that's the use cases that we are bringing forward into Enderman. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please uh, reach out to me. Uh, whoever wants to go next.
Sorry, I was uh, <laughs> muted. Um, we can thank you for your presentation. We can skip to IFAC presentation. Okay, sure. I will start sharing my screen. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, yes. good. Let me know if you're seeing my screen, please. Do you see my screen in um, slideshow no. mode? No, no, we show the presenter mode, the presenter view. The presenter view, okay. And now, do you see it in full slide mode? Not yet. Now, yes. Okay, good. So, hello, everyone, and good morning from my side. And thank you for uh, this opportunity to present um, our use case and also the standards used at Infineon and which gap uh, which we think would be added to the standards. So, um, I will start by showing um, the position of the Infineon use case. So our use case in nutshell is about um, energy efficiency um, on a supply chain level. We want to use um, all the information we get from um, the manufacturing level to try to scale it up to use it also for a supply chain level um, in this um, bottom-up approach. Okay, um, what I would like to present you today, first um, a brief description of the Infineon use case and then the standard uh, and gaps in these ISO standards. Um, here is a, an overview of the semiconductor supply chain. Um, it starts with uh, the front end uh, manufacturing step, which is a very lengthy step that could last up to 100 days. Here, it's also where the energy intensive processes are, um, the lithography processes and all these uh, lengthy and complex processes. Second uh, manufacturing uh, step is the back end. This is um, shorter in terms of um, compared to the front end um, and less energy intensive. But all in all, um, semiconductor manufacturing is characterized by long cycle times because uh, of the long, of the long uh, manufacturing processes and the complex processes. Um, and also it requires clean room production, which is also capital intensive and energy intensive. Um, semiconductor manufacturing starts with a silicon wafer and then on, on top of these uh, wafers, then uh, microcontrollers or chips are built. Uh, dimensions of a chip could be um, traditionally between eight, um, could go up to eight millimeter. And here they contain millions of small electronic devices. If you zoom in one of these devices, you can see um, elements of, uh, of a chip. The dimensions here are 50 micrometer. And if you wonder what this um, brown thing is, this is a human hair, which is typically a 90 micrometer in diameter. Uh, so this picture means uh, for us that any kind of impurity um, to the manufacturing in semiconductors could damage these products, uh, which requires uh, manufacturing in semiconductor being formed in clean room uh, conditions. For sure, then these uh, products will be packaged uh, and not sold bare because they will not be able to um, sustain the conditions of uh, operating without packages. 
So they said clean room conditions are necessary for semiconductor manufacturing. And uh, this picture shows you a good comparison between a clean room in the medical field, so operation or surgery rooms, compared to um, clean rooms in the semiconductor industry. And in the semiconductor industry, um, we have uh, 1,000 times cleaner um, clean rooms uh, compared to the surgery rooms. Yeah, because we allow only 10 particles uh, in one cubic meter compared to uh, 10,000 particles in cubic meter in an operation room. Uh, so for sure, not only the clean room conditions are behind um, the, the, in, the energy intensive um, in the semiconductor industry, but also the complex processes um, in the semiconductor uh, manufacturing that could go up to 500 processes so a wafer need to visit these machines more than 500 times that to be uh, produced um, also these machines uh, are very expensive in general semiconductor is a very capital intensive a machine of such like this one could cost uh, in the range between 1 million euro to 50 million euro and to build a factory, you need uh, roughly 1,000 of these machines. So building a fab could cost you an order of magnitude of billion of euros. Uh, but our intention in Enerman is to not go in details to the details of the complex uh, processes here, the manufacturing uh, processes, but to look only at um, energy consumption point of view and how to use the, the data from energy flow diagrams or synthetic data for our simulations to try to, um, to make judgments of, on energy efficiency on supply chain level. Okay. Um, electricity consumption um, accounts for a high um, share in the overall Infineon footprint. And according to our sustainability report, which appears every year, um, this share of electricity is uh, very close to 50% of the overall emissions. Then Infineon manages its um, production network as, um, or as its supply chain as one network of all these production uh, locations, also our, our production partners as one global virtual factory, because this we think uh, is the only way to do this complex business in this competitive environment uh, to achieve competitive advantage. Also our use cases in Enerman, if we manage to um, have a look at this energy efficiency on supply chain level is also this global virtual factory view of our supply chain. Okay, I talked about how we could use these energy flow diagrams, which are present, um, which are um, usually um, obtained from each location or each factory. They consist of energy consumption, um, energy from electricity or heating or air compression, cooling or water. So this detailed energy diagram um, could be the starting point for us. Um, also, I think we, we will, um, as part of our contribution in Work Package 3, we will also share some data um, on monthly granularity also. Um, and we will use this in our simulations. And the simulation plan looks something like this. So we try to use the learning we got on the the factory level on the manufacturing side level to try to build um, a supply chain uh, simulation and then uh, check how energy efficiency um, decisions could be done on supply chain level. Uh, we conducted a study back in 2018, which proved for us that when we are flexible in our manufacturing network, this enable us to save CO2 
um, main uh, idea behind this savings of CO2 is from the optimization of the use of clean room conditions. The clean room conditions operate 24 hours, seven all year long, even if uh, production is low. So with low utilization of our manufacturing uh, site is still the, the share of electricity and the share of, of energy dedicated to clean, to clean room condition it is still high. And by optimizing these uh, clean room conditions, we get to a low uh, per product CO2. And this, um, this early study, which we conducted back then, uh, which drove us to focus on this top topic and provide um, uh, the, the study which we did here was rather verified only and not uh, supported and validated with uh, real data. And now we want to uh, make something more validated in our work, in our contribution and engagement in NRMAN. Uh, now coming to the standards, I think some of the standards here are already mentioned by um, some of the presenters. I think the famous ISO, um, ISO, ISO standard uh, 5301 uh, is the one for energy management uh, system standards. This one used at Infineon is also part of our global management system called IMPRESS. Uh, the ISO standard 14, uh, three zeros, the family of standards here are used for Infineon uh, for the CO2 emission calculations. Um, they account only for the CO2 consumptions. And we think uh, the gap uh, could be uh, accounting for the CO2 savings especially the CO2 savings potential coming from the use of our semiconductors when they are used in technologies and when they are used by our customers. And every year, Infineon publish uh, these CO2 consumptions from one hand. It's called the CO2 burden. Here, the ISO standards family 14 um, three zeros is used. Um, it, it consists of all uh, sources of CO2, like manufacturing, transportation. Uh, but on the other hand, we also calculate the CO2 savings potential from our products being used in energy um, efficiency technologies like, um, like automotive uh, smart cars, like in industrial applications or in wind and solar generations. And, and this part is uh, not yet included in a ISO standard. And reason is uh, to include it because we need to have um, an end-to-end -end, um, picture of, of the CO2 reductions. So the aim is to be more um, energy efficient in CO2 burden. So reducing the CO2 consumption, but also going up uh, with the CO2 savings of our products. And we need to show this because uh, fighting climate change um, or tackling climate change requires all possible effective actions. One action doesn't help to, to tackle climate change. And I thought I could show you this by a, a simulator. If you give me maybe one or two minutes extra. Um, I will go here to a, uh, this is a simulation which is built by an I, uh, MIT um, management and the, in, uh, the climate interactive. It's open and free uh, to use for demonstrating of um, how um, different effective actions could tackle climate change. So what you see here, you see the global sources of primary energy. So here, how the world meets its energy demand. We use a lot of coal, as you see, we use oil, we use natural gas, renewables, bioenergy, and nuclear. Um, this um, consumption of energy results in, um, results, results in uh, CO2 emissions, and these CO2 emissions are behind the, the increase and the rise of uh, temperature compared to the pre-industrial level. Um, 
And these sliders show the different effective um, actions that could be used to lower these emissions and to lower also result in lowering the temperature increase. Paris Agreement, for example, aim at keeping uh, this temperature increase between 1.5 and 2. So what I was saying, um, we need more than one action. We need more, more than one action to 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 reduce these um, emissions not only from the CO2 consumption point of view. So when we, um, when we for instance, uh, put more taxes on oil or natural gas, or we incentivize renewables, um, maybe we put more in, in, uh, subsidize, subsidizing uh, nuclear energy or more new breakthroughs in, in uh, new zero carbon energies. Um, also putting some carbon price uh, also reduces um, the temperature increase, but still we need to allow other um, actions. And, and these actions, from my point of view, are related to the CO2 savings part, the potential of, of products like the one in the semiconductor in save CO2. So uh, when we, for instance, increase energy efficiency in transportation and, and, and maybe incentivize more electrification. Here you see we are closer to two degrees. When a product like uh, Enerma also allow more energy efficiency in, in, in industrialization and more electrification industries and buildings is, um, is allowed. Also we see we're getting even closer to, um, to two and maybe when the world plant more trees we stop cutting trees and then again we get close to two when we reduce our methane and other um, uh, greenhouse gas emissions then i think we're even closer to uh, two degree and when more carbon removal technologies are in i think we can drop uh, below uh, two degrees which is the aim of the paris agreement so uh, with this what I wanted to show here, uh, we need that shows all all uh, sides and all effective actions, not only from one perspective, which is the manufacturing and and only the the, the raw materials and this stuff, but also other sides such as the CO two savings of um, of products. I think with this, I came to the end of my presentation. I thank you so much, and maybe I, I took extra time, but I, it was necessary to show you my message. Thank you, Abdel, for your very useful and detailed presentation. Uh, so I I would ask uh, Azas uh, if uh, someone can uh, present the use case. Let me share my screen. Can you see it? And yes. can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, then. Uh, my name is Artunç. Uh, I am working as a R&D engineer uh, in Asash. So. I would like to start with the uh, tri-generation tri plant, which is a use case of Asash. Uh, Asash uh, can generate 35% uh, of its electricity uh, in uh, their tri-generation facilities. Uh, and also steam and hot water that obtain from them uh, are used in anodizing lines. Uh, here you can see uh, the power voltage current and frequency uh, of the tri-generation tri plant. Uh, in Enerman, uh, an algorithm is developing to ensure smart operation of the tri-generation plant. A system uh, will decide when and how, how many engines to run. <coughs> uh, for us, uh, energy man management pol policy, uh, within the scope of uh, our energy management, uh, we are committed to ensuring that all our energy-oriented processes are managed within the framework of our corporate strategy and priorities. Uh, reducing the amount of energy used in 
our production in actuary operations, provision and dissemination on, of information resources that will lead to goals and targets and making the budget for achieving these targets. Uh, following up uh, and utilization of uh, energy efficient products and services and to comply with all legal and other requirements related to energy. Uh, our responsibilities in uh, Asash actually, uh, we are creating of uh, energy efficiency awareness within the uh, body of Asash and supporting all of uh, works that may provide sustainability. Uh, in Asash, uh, there is a separate energy committee for uh, each department in order to ensure energy efficiency more effectively. Uh, what doing? What are doing uh, these energy committees? They are creating awareness and consensus in energy in the relevant departments, providing trainings, uh, and they are responsible for ensuring and monitoring energy efficient operations. Uh, in a way that will uh, contribute to our sustainable growth, uh, we determine project potentials uh, with a certain amount of energy efficiency every year, both as an output of uh, the ISO energy management system and as a natural result of the teamwork within the energy department, of course. Uh, also, in order to directly contribute to sustainability and to use energy effectively, uh, we received the LEED certificate uh, as gold category for our uh, R&D building. Uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, hello, this is Andreas from Sphinx. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, since we are uh, having this workshop and uh, of course the first year of the project and uh, uh, to my understanding, uh, uh, we we have started I, identifying uh, uh, possible st different standardization initiative groups, etc. Uh, also, we have created this uh, repository. Uh, I would like again to ask all of you to contribute on this. That means to 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 go through the, the repository and uh, fill in any information that we haven't uh, uh, gathered so far. And uh, then uh, another activity we, sh we should start considering is uh, uh, to start to identify uh, what uh, things of in our uh, proposition, in our proposition could be, uh, let's say, explore, explored for standardization activities. Uh, to this extent, I think we should create uh, some sort of a plate and can uh, circulate it among our uh, partners of the consortium. Another uh, for from I mean from every technology provider or UCS provider to to fill in uh, information about uh, the possibilities of uh, what they what they offer and uh, in which standards. Uh, uh, this offering can uh, interact or uh, or provide contribution or uh, maybe uh, are, uh, have a connection already depend on it. I mean, uh, this is my early thoughts about standardization, and of course we should also see within our consortium the, the links we have with uh, with standardization uh, activities groups uh, events and so on in order to to proceed to disseminate for the first uh, step to disseminate the project what we are doing uh, what is the proposition of Enerman, and what would be the outcomes and of course then uh, as, as the pro uh, project uh, evolves also to to foster to to disseminate also outcomes to, to different stakeholders and groups to see their interest uh, interest and exchange ideas on uh, on them. Uh, I don't know if you have comments on this uh, or any other uh, suggestion of uh, uh, no of what uh, I said. Also, I see Giacomo has uh, raising his hand. So maybe you have a question there, yes? Yes, so good morning to everybody. I'm Giacomo Bianchi from Stima CNR in Italy, and I'm participating to the E2 Commission project. And my question is about the standard 
you will consider because I saw that you are considering energy standard at company or factory level. And, but of course, the plants are composed by several machines and different components. And for some of them, there are some standards at component level and machine level. No? So, for example, I participate to the ISO standard for machine tool energy efficiency, etc. And so, will you consider also this level, lower level, for um, assessment of uh, your plans, or you think it's to uh, maybe still under development or uh, too complex to be considered in such a large project? I'm not sure who had, what is the answer on this. I don't know if anyone has any comment on this question. Um, uh, but I think that the, the main objective of this effort is to see the NMR offerings and how uh, they will affect uh, standardization, how it will interact with standards. So uh, it depends on uh, on what I actually... So, so the answer to this question is okay. We have to, to identify what exactly we are offering, and and then we could answer uh, uh, such a question. I don't know if anyone has any uh, comment on this. Uh, this is because Enerman does not uh, produce devices or uh, it, it's a, it is a framework that has to do with uh, sustainability and also have promised some sort of contribution to certification, uh, uh, let's say to produce a, a methodology regarding if this methodology becomes a certification, uh, part of a certification process or, uh, or not, but uh, uh, the goal here is to to see the best practices obtained out of Enerman and propose them as a part of uh, some sort of certification. Uh, so I'm not sure if this uh, thing in, in uh, the level you suggest. Yeah, thank you. So my impression is that probably you will concentrate at factory and company level and not uh, th yes. This is the view right now, but uh, of course we are open. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other question or uh, topic for discussion? Uh, I think we should focus on what would be the, ne the immediate next step towards this uh, process because, uh, okay, this is again the starting point of the project. We will, uh, behind, we're almost uh, reaching the first year of the project. Uh, no major outcomes have been produced so far, but uh, during the next years, uh, we should be more intensive. With the, I mean, the standardization uh, activities. Uh, uh, also, another proposition is uh, we have to organize another two workshops like this one. Uh, each of them will be at the end of uh, uh, the next two years, and uh, maybe we, sh depending on the, of course, on the COVID situation, we can uh, force them to be part of a, let's say, live uh, meeting with uh, collocated with uh, some of our plenary meetings or other events in order to. Of course, to have more uh, active participation and more uh, uh, live discussions and the planning of uh, on uh, standardization activities. I don't know what the consortium thinks of this. It's, uh... Yes, yeah. I think uh, uh, the next workshop uh, we can have uh, on live. Um, live and not uh, by remote. Mm. Uh, 
Uh, and also the goal here would be to to also to have uh, um, uh, participation of more external parties uh, in order to to interact with them and see uh, our, their best practices or uh, opportunities or uh, working groups etc yes i think we we should also uh, maintain a network with the other european project uh, uh that uh, that are uh, that are present uh, today and uh, have a continuous exchange uh, of uh, information with them to to facilitate the uh, uh, the work for uh, for everyone especially for the specialization Okay, so if there uh, there are no more comments, uh, question or anything else, I think that uh, uh, we, we can close uh, uh, the call. I would only ask uh, to Mark Rocchetti if he can uh, uh, share his presentation and uh, um, you can send uh, by mail to to twice and uh, we, we can share uh, the, the the presentation the previous preventive presentation that we have done uh, on the normal introduction and standardization i think hello hello uh, yes yes um, i i shared this uh, this morning my presentation with the um, the workshop coordinator and uh, so you are completely free to share with the whole the participant and uh, so i would like also to say thank you very much for this opportunity to present denim and uh, our uh, contribution for the um, standardization standardization activities we will be able to continue to participate in this uh, this okay. This, yes, in this workshop, in, and uh, if you want to uh, to receive contribution for organize uh, the next meeting, uh, we will be happy to provide uh, our support and uh, share uh, uh, invitation with our uh, partners. So, um, thank you very much for this opportunity. Okay, th thank you, thank you too for uh, for participating in the, this meeting and for uh, all the other external partners that uh, attend this workshop. Uh, so uh, I, I remind uh, everybody to fill the the file if uh, he has uh, he hasn't do do it yet. And uh, thank you again for your time and for your uh, effort in. Uh, in this uh, in this workshop and if there is no more uh, topics uh, to discuss i think that we can uh, close, close uh, this workshop and i hope to see you again okay thank you marco yes okay so thank you everybody and thank you marco Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.